So hello, welcome today. This video is gonna um, demonstrate how to open up a tooth, access a tooth, find MB2 and shape MB2. And today we're gonna, we're not gonna finish the case today. This case is gonna be dressed and ready for obturation at a later date. So this uh, patient presented me um, with uh, a, a temporary dressing. The GIC looks like it's come out or whatever temporary dressing was in. And there was a, a lot of decay and there was a hell of a lot of um, dirt and muck that just had to be removed. And it, it's really, really, really important to remove all of the filling material, all of the decay at this stage, mainly because when you are, um, say you're halfway through the root canal and you've opened up the canals and you've shaped them, and then you then decide to remove the filling and then you decide to remove the decay, you will find that as you're removing said decay and fillings, that little fragments of those fillings and little fragments of, um, of that decay will fall down the, uh, the canal spaces and block the canal spaces. And also when you take an x-ray, say uh, an amalgam, a little tiny piece falls down, um, you'll see these pieces and it's, and it's super annoying, especially if you're a perfectionist like me. So the video today is is not going to talk about shaping the normal canals. Um, you know the Mesi book. This is an upper six, by the way. Uh, the Mesi buckle, distal buckle, and the palatal. So what I've done here is I've just sped up my um, my shaping protocol here. And what what I'm using here is I'm just using size 10k files, 2% sodium hypochlorite, and high flex files. So. It's a given now that these uh, canals have been shaped, okay? So you always shape the, um, the, 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 the first three before you go for the MB2. And what we can see, we've got the DB, we've got the MB, and now we've got the palatal. So at this point, I'm gonna pause the video. Um, I am thinking to myself, is there or is there not an MB2, okay? So on the X-ray, the um, some people would argue, but the MB looks as if um, it, the 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 the, uh, the route is quite narrow, so you know there's an argument to say maybe there's not enough space for two canals in there. But nevertheless, we I, I will look for him. And if we look on the video here, we can see where my probe is, where the um, I'm, I'm looking in this direction here, and I can see on my microscope that there's a kind of a little bit of a fold of dentin and the MB2 will be hiding under this shelf of dentin here. So what I am gonna use now is I'm gonna use some ultrasonic tips. So these are uh, specific endodontic ultrasonic tips that have got a diamond coated um, sort of end on them that slowly, really, really gently remove dentin. So I suppose in a way you could use um, a fast hand piece down here, but I, I would say you're probably risking perforating the tooth. So these are really, really nice conservative instruments to use. You can't use these instruments on a normal ultrasonic tip as if you would on your chair. You have to use a specific endodontic um, uh, unit. So, cause, cause the, the ultrasonic on the chair is too strong and it will actually break the tips. So, I'm just having a very, very gentle little scout around here. Um, like I say, even with the ultrasonic tips, you've got to be really, really careful you don't perforate. Um, you know, and I have perforated teeth with these ultrasonic tips before. The great thing, I suppose, not the great thing, but the beneficiary of using these and perforating is it's usually only a pinprick and very, very easy to um, repair, okay, but you, you don't want to do it, of course, but it, if it does occur, it's probably less um, dramatic as you say you perforate with a fast hand piece. It also gives you a nice clear field of view as well, so you can see the tip as you are removing dentin. So I've removed the dentin shelf there, and I think I can see an orifice. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a size 10K file, just slightly bent because it's difficult for me to get into the, uh, the, 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 the sort of plane of attack for the MB2. And I'm just slowly watch winding in, in that direction. And as I've just removed the, uh, the, the, uh, 
the uh, uh, tweezers there, the, the file sticks up nicely. So I, so I think I'm in some kind of orifice and I'm just having a very, very nice little twiddle with this, uh, with this K file. Um, and at the moment, I think it's probably not advancing because there's still a significant amount of denting um, covering this, uh, this, this orifice. And as, as we all know, um, usually what stops a file is, um, is, is denting further up. It's not usually the advancement of the, the little hole, but it's the, but it's the denting further up that, that stops um, the, the file from uh, advancing. So what I'm going to use now is I'm going to use this fantastic file I love by Hyflex. It's a 1503 rotary file. And I am just really, really gently just opening up this orifice. I am not pushing this file in any way, shape or form. This file is just, I'm just letting it go where it wants to go. I'm just very, very, very gently. So what I'm doing is slowly advancing the file, but I'm also shaping the orifice as well. And um, notice there's a quite a, a significant bend on this file. And you've got to really, really be careful of file fracture in this case. And um, again, just using lots and lots of irrigants and um, making sure I uh, irrigate a lot. I'm now going to use a Hyflex 2005 file. And again, uh, in this case, I'm not trying to advance the file at all. I am just opening up the, the orifice. Um, advancing this file, you uh, risk ledging the uh, MB2. Back in with the size 15, and now when I use the size 15 high flex, uh, the 1503, I notice that now it's starting to really, really go to length, and that's because I've opened up this orifice. And and again, I'm just letting the file do its own thing. I am not um, pushing this file in any way, shape, or form. The action of the rotary is 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 making me advance down this 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 orifice. I haven't taken a working length x-ray, um, a working length uh, measurement yet with my apex locator. I am just kind of going third of the way of the MB1 uh, working length. And now I am going to use something called a D-finder. These D-finders are absolutely amazing. And if you are struggling to get to length on canals, I strongly, strongly, strongly you suggest you get yourself some of these D-finders. Um, I, I don't know how they work, they just work, they're magical. And um, with this D-finder, I am just very, very slowly um, getting to length. And it doesn't show here, but I take a working length X-ray here. There you go, there's the uh, apex locator. So we know the working length, the D-finders helped us get to length. And now I am going to use a size 1503 rotary file again and with the rubber stopper set to the working length. And again, I will say it over and over and over again. I am not pushing this file. This file is just going its own way and it's essentially going to the working length. Really, really nice and easy and lots of irrigation. And, you know, you, we used to do uh, glide path files with um, with hand files, but with with these rotary files, glide path files now, they're they're just absolutely amazing. They as long as you don't push the file too far, you let the file do its own thing, it will go to length eighty percent of the time. I've been told. Um, and now we are just using our mass apical file. This is another uh, high flex. It's again the twenty o five, and I am just shaping nicely. Um, notice I am doing a few more pecs than really I should be doing, um, but I can just feel the file going to length and I'm, and I'm, and I'm happy I'm not going to ledge or I'm not going to um, put too much stress on this file and it's gone really, really nice to length. And um, lots of irrigation. Sometimes it's nice to see the irrigation all fizzing inside the pulp chain because you know it's just, um, just working its magic. And um, very, very Final, 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 final um, uh, thing that I'm that I'm kind of doing now is I'm just recapitulating with that D finder. Um, I think maybe as I was using the 20, it was just struggling slightly, and I just wanted to remove any of the blockages that were occurring at the end of this tooth. And then just a final recapitulation with the size 
1503 and the 2005. Lots of irrigation. And um, there you have it. We've got our four instrumented and disinfected canal spaces. Now this patient was only booked in for an hour and um, uh, we didn't have enough time to obturate. So we are gonna dress the tooth with a non-setting calcium hydroxide. In, in this case, I am using the calcium hydroxide with a uh, with a, like a sort of plastic uh, needle or, or, you know, connected onto the syringe itself. I'll say this, I'll say it a thousand times in all of my um, uh, uh, videos, you've got to be really, really careful using this without really, really good magnification because you can push um, the um, calcium hydroxide into the periapical tissues. And remember, calcium hydroxide is a toxic substance. Okay, so you're going to be super, super careful. And then we're just going to pack the, um, the, the, the tooth with PTFE. PTFE has the benefit over uh, cotton wool that it, well, when we stick this GIC filling on here, it doesn't stick to the, uh, the PTFE. So we're, we're thinking into the future. So when I come to access this tooth again, and I come to obturate this tooth, it, you, you're not going to get that thing where you, you put your fast hand piece in and the, uh, the, the fast hand piece gets stuck to the, um, the GI and it's just really, really difficult to remove and also doesn't get stuck to your, um, to your burr instead. So overall, a really, really nice result. It's always beautiful to see uh, an MB2 canal and to uh, successfully instrument it. If you like this video, I really, really, really like making these videos. Please like and subscribe to my channel and any questions, comment in below. Okay, it's really, really good to see you and I'll see you in the next video. Toodaloo, bye-bye.